Apollo 8, Houston, do you call? Apollo 8, Apollo 8, do you call? Negative, uh, Apollo 8, we did not call you. Okay, thank you. Roger. Apollo 8, Houston. Okay, I've got some weather and recovery force status and uh, a couple of last minute items to run down anytime it's convenient for you. Alright, it's convenient right now. Okay, uh, for the mid-Pacific, uh, the general condition is good. You can expect cloud bases uh, 2,000 foot scattered, visibility 10 miles. Wind 070 at 12, wave height 4 feet, altimeter 2974. Okay, sunrise will be 1710 Zulu. And first light, 1649 Zulu. The recovery forces. The ship will be Yorktown. The aircraft will be Airboss number one and two. And recoveries one, two, and three. The estimated time to the target point, uh, the ship is, Yorktown is on the target point. Airboss aircraft, uh, 15 minutes, and will be on scene commander. Recoveries 1, 2, and 3 are SH-3 Alphas, and they go with the Yorktown, so they're at the target point. All of them have swimmers aboard. If the recovery aircraft do not hear from the spacecraft, they'll go ahead and put swimmers in the water. And if you're in good shape and give them a call, they may hold off on dropping swimmers until uh, sunrise. Roger, say again the, the sunrise and first light time for me, would you please? I'll uh, say again, 8. Apollo 8, uh, Houston, uh, notice a rather large middle gimbal angle, over. Sunrise okay, sunrise is 1710 Zulu. And the first light is 1649 Zulu. Thank you. Okay, eight, uh, looking over the, uh, the weather I gave you was the 2,000 foot scattered at the target point. May have a 6,000 foot broken layer above that. And at the max lift point, you'll have about the same thing. And uh, altimeter is the same uh, down the range. Uh, as you go further to the east, the weather should improve slightly. Uh, there's no, uh, no problem with thunderstorms or rain showers in any of your recovery area. Very good, thank you. The items that uh, we still need will be a PRD reading, as late as you can do it conveniently prior to the final stowage. And we don't have any numbers on the uh, last crew sleep period. I'd like to verify that the Secondary RCS was activated on all four quads. And I have about uh, five comments on the entry checklist procedures to verify. It was activated on all four quads, that's correct. Our final storage is completed. 
Okay. We'll read off the PR. We'll read off the PRDs for you now. All right. Thank you. The LMPs reads point six four. I believe it's been that way throughout the flight. CMPs reads point one one. That, that's one point one one. Roger. Stand by a minute while we look at it closely. That's point one one. Roger. Zero point one one. And the one I ended up with reads three point one zero. Okay. Thank you. Okay, go ahead, Ken. What else do you want to talk about? Okay, uh, make everybody happy. We can use uh, an estimate of the number of hours sleep that people have got. Notice oh, okay, in the... sorry. Just a minute. Uh, I'll give you that. I forgot. Thank you. Bill Anders got about five hours. And uh, Jim Lovell got about five, and I, I got about uh, five and a half or six. Sounds good. Okay. We went through uh, uh, an exercise with a mock-up on the pre-entry preparations, and we noticed that uh, in the LMP checklist on page S12, when you go to top off the uh, repress bottles, I believe it's a misprint. It should read the PLSS fill valve rather than the repress valve, and we should be going to the fill position as opposed to going to on. Roger, we're, we're, that's what we do. Okay. And on. Uh, go ahead. Go, go ahead. That's we agree. That's what we do. Okay. On page E7 of the entry checklist, and under step 34, as long as you have panel 382 open, that's a convenient time to go ahead and have the evaporator water controls, both primary and secondary, to auto and the food heat exchanger for the secondary glycol to flow. Those items are already accomplished. Very good. On page E9, when you're getting ready to transfer the RCS to the uh, command module position, if you want to avoid having the engine fire as a result of attitude corrections, you might want to take the manual attitude switches to Excel command or minimum impulse. And again, on E9 Alpha at step 41 Bravo, you, if you want to go back to attitude hold, bring the manual attitude switches back to rate. What was that last step? Step 41 Bravo on page E9 Alpha. If, if you decide to use either uh, minimum impulse or Excel command on page E9, step 41 Bravo would be a good place to go back to uh, rate command. Okay, we do. That's where we do it. Okay, fine. And I don't. I didn't put all those control configuration changes in the checklist, but so that's exactly what we do. Use minimum impulse. Okay, real fine. This is Apollo Control Houston, and uh, everything seems to be proceeding very nicely. Ken Mattingly's been running through uh, entry, pre-entry uh, checklists with Frank Borman. We're content, so are they. At the news conference a little while ago, uh, numbers were passed to the press based on a, uh, a final maneuver of uh, something on the order of one or two feet per second. As you know, we scrubbed. Uh, there is no need for such a maneuver. It has been terminated. But it's uh, the effect that 
the fact that we are not going to have the maneuver matters almost uh, not at all on the numbers. For instance, it changes the splash time by one second. So uh, if you recorded numbers earlier, let's stick with those. And uh, we have uh, recorded the, con the checklist con conversation with Apollo 8. We'll play it for you now. Houston, Apollo 8. Go ahead, 8. Apollo 8. Apollo 8, go ahead. I'd like to confirm uh, one item on the pad message, please. Uh, Roger. Time to retro uh, drugs. Uh, reference your last time to drugs, please. Okay, I'll check that one out. And also, Ken, we're going to turn on our VHF now about four hours before any. Real fine, thank you. I'll let you know when we pick it up. A simplex. A firm. This is Apollo Control Houston at 142 hours, three minutes into the mission. A word or two on some of the uh, congratulatory or message traffic that we've experienced during this mission. I would call it unusually high, probably associated with the general interest in the mission, the fact that it is the holiday season and more people have more time to express themselves. In general, uh, far and away, the, the comments have been uh, extremely laudatory, praiseworthy. And, uh, of course, there has, as there always is, a very small but a, an extremely vocal minority who uh, thinks we shouldn't have done the mission or uh, if we should have, we shouldn't have done it over a religious holiday. Still others who uh, criti criticize any religious overtones that have crept into the mission. But uh, perhaps typical of the happier kinds of messages is one that was received here just a few hours ago simply from an anonymous well-wisher in Hornsby, H-O-R-N-S-B-Y, New South Wales, Australia. It reads, Happy Landing, Apollo 8 astronauts. At 142 hours, four minutes into the flight, this is Apollo Control, Houston. Apollo 8, Houston. Go ahead, Houston. Okay, uh... We have checked into your drogue time, and the number of 0816 on your entry pad is correct. We'll be giving you an updated entry pad on the scheduled time of 143.30. At the same time, we'll be giving you an update of your state vectors for the LEM and CSM. The mid-course okay. correction number seven was less than seven tenths foot per second, and we will not execute it. You have, a, you have a P-52 scheduled at 143.30, which is not required, your option. However, if you decide to delete the P-52, the CMC self-check and this key condition light test are still requirements. Over. What, what do you mean are still requirements? Uh, we weren't planning to do the CMC self-check. Apollo 8, Houston. That's my mistake on the CMC self-check and this key condition lights. Uh, that's an optional test, over. Right, that's what we thought, Ken. Uh, gosh, it's been working perfectly for six days. I don't, I don't see any reason to test it. I agree. Thank you. Morning, Ken. How's Houston this morning? Just fine. Nice and balmy. Good. Apollo Control Houston at 142 hours, 34 minutes, and in the last few minutes we've recorded this conversation. And at 
that was Jim Lovell. You heard chime in at the end. He's uh, up and uh, sounding perky this morning. And at 142 hours, 37 minutes, that's our status. Uh, Houston, Apollo 8, over. Go ahead, Apollo 8. Apollo 8, go ahead. I'll just uh, confirm as my uh, understanding. We're going to bring up the uh, secondary loop at one hour prior to have stop. Is that right? Affirmative, but uh, page Echo 9. Okay. And Bill, uh, Rod suggested that uh, if we have the water boiler going on the primary loop, that you uh, you might wait about five minutes or so before you initiate the uh, secondary loop. Wait five minutes from what? From the time the primary loop starts or from one hour? Uh, from the time the primary loop starts. This will give you a check to see if it had a chance to dry out or not. Oh, I'm with you, okay. And for your own uh, information, uh, we already have a VHF downlink. It's uh, poor quality, but we do have contact. Okay, we haven't turned anything over to VHF yet. Okay. We tried to call you on VHF, though, Ken. All right, I say the uh, quality's pretty poor. They may not be able to understand you. Go ahead, Apollo 8. Apollo 8, Houston, go ahead. Uh, Ken, we got uh, two things going here which make uh, this uh, heat exchanger flow a little different. One of them is uh, we're not doing a cold soak, and the other one is we're powering down the secondary loop prior to SEP. And I'm wondering if it's a good idea to have the uh, suit heat exchanger only on the secondary loop in that case. Uh, I don't think that was the intent, Bill. Uh, what they had in mind was we'd have both loops, uh, have the suit heat exchanger on both loops. And if it got too cold, you could uh, use the panel switching to shut down the primary loop through the heat exchanger. But in any event, you'd always have something going through the, uh, through the suit heat exchanger. I recognize that we're going to be shutting down the secondary heat exchanger precept and then turning it back on prior to entry. But the idea was to have both the primary and secondary loops on the suit heat exchanger simultaneously. Yeah, my check list doesn't reflect that, but I think that's a good idea since uh, we're a little suspect of our cabin fans and don't plan to use them. Right. Apollo Control, Houston here, 142 hours, 59 minutes into the flight. And uh, the velocity increase we're seeing is now becoming dramatic. We're up to 11,298 feet per second, and it's really building. We're 30,424 miles from home. Here's some conversation with the crew. Houston, Apollo 8, over. Go ahead, 8. Apollo 8, Apollo 8, go ahead. Uh, Roger, what's uh, Rod's estimate of our uh, post-separation uh, main bus voltage? The Apollo Control Houston here, that brings us up to date. And, uh, to amplify one remark, I think you heard Bill Anders say he'd try to call on VHF. It, if it was received, it was badly garbled. If I recall correctly, on the way out in their flight away from the Earth, we they heard us broadcasting on VHF out to about 22,000 miles. We've got just about the reverse situation here where it's slightly more than 29,000 miles out. 
At uh, 143 hours, four minutes into the flight, this is Apollo Control, Houston. Apollo 8, Houston. Be making a handover from Carnarvon to Honeysuckle at 1-5. Roger. Houston, Apollo 8, over. Apollo 8, go ahead. I'm still a little bit confused on uh, this uh, activate the secondary loop. Uh, you indicated it activating it at one hour or five minutes after the primary uh, evaporator comes online. My checklist shows that the primary evaporator uh, probably won't come on the line until we bypass the uh, uh, radiators. Have you got something else in mind that I don't know about? Okay, Bill, uh, we passed up an update uh, sometime back on page E9, step 38, right at the beginning. And you've got a final GDC drift check. And then between there and the, and the step 39 where it says to terminate CMRCS preheat, that was the place we wanted to activate the uh, primary loop by putting the glycol evaporator water switch to auto and the glycol evaporator steam pressure to auto. Uh, Roger, I don't expect it to boil, though, do you? Okay, Bill, uh, we're hoping that it will there. It looks like uh, we'll have had a stable attitude for some time, and we anticipate that it will be warm enough to make it boil. That's the reason suggested that if it is boiling, that you wait. If it isn't, go ahead and, and uh, turn on the secondary loop. Okay, well, that, that's where I was confused. I'm with you now. Thank you. Yes, sir. Apollo 8, Houston. Go ahead, Houston. Okay, Apollo 8, we'd like to update your LEM state vector, CSM state vector, and target point. And if it's convenient now, why we'll go ahead and do that if you'll go to pool and accept. Roger, pool and accept. Apollo 8, Houston. Go ahead, Houston. Apollo 8. Okay, the loads are in and verified, and the computer is yours. You can take it back to block. And for Bill's uh, information, uh, latest guess on the main bus post set voltage is 27.5. Yes. You mean the E times are guessing? Change. That's more than you can say for the computers. Or the crew. Apollo Control, Houston here at 143 hours, 36 minutes into the flight. And we've been uh, chatting more with Bill Anders primarily Apollo on how Houston. things look. We're, the spacecraft is now 26,458 miles from Earth, moving in a velocity of 12,075 feet per second. The weight of the spacecraft is 31,600 pounds. Now that Apollo weight will change Houston. dramatically uh, 15 Go minutes ahead, before we on. reach the... 400,000 okay, foot we mark have, uh, on the service module point. leaves us. It'll go from 31,600 down to about 12,000 pounds, and it'll hold close to that on end. Here's the conversation. Ready to copy it. Okay, this will be the Mid Pacific. Three, five, seven. One, five, two, three, five, niner. 
one four six two nine zero zero two six eight plus zero eight one three minus one six five zero three zero six five three six two two one six four five one two one two two three six three zero one one four six four six one four zero zero two eight the next block is november alpha d sub zero four zero 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 two one two zero zero two five zero three three four zero eight one four one six zero five nine zero three one two Zeta Persei up one six five right three four up use non exit EMS pattern GDC align primary star Sirius secondary Rigel roll three zero eight pitch two zero niner yaw three five seven this entry will not involve P65, over. Houston Apollo 8, entry pad as follows. Mid Pacific, 357, 152, 359, 146, 2900, 268, plus 0813, minus 16503. 065-3622-1645-1212-36301-1464614-0028. Next block not applicable. 400 0212-0025-0334-0814-16. 059-312, Zeta Percy I, up 165, right 35, up. Use non-exit EMS pattern, backup uh, alignment, Sirius Rigel, roll 308, pitch 209, jaw 357, and we won't see P65. Okay, Apollo 8, I'd like to verify the sextant star, shaft. Zero five nine or zero, and the Borside star. The last one is right three four over. Roger, uh, Borside star is right three four, and I have the uh, second shaft of zero five nine zero. That's correct, Apollo eight. Apollo Control here. And that brings us up to the point where we are now. For those newsmen watching the projection on monitors in our MSC Auditorium news area, you'll be able to see very shortly the spacecraft do a long loop-the-loop -loop kind of maneuver uh, against a flat map such as we're viewing. The maneuver will be quite similar to that that we saw the other day the T after the TLI burn when we did a big uh, loop 
before we started tracing a steady uh, flight path away from the Earth. And of course we're going to see this morning the mirror image of that maneuver. Only in this case it'll be performed uh, almost directly over India. The spacecraft is now looking down on the southern tip of India, it's directly over Ceylon. And it will, uh, for Earth mapping purposes, seem to proceed in, in a northwesterly direction as it prepares to make its uh, its entry, as it lines up for its entry path uh, back to the Earth and to the Pacific Ocean. We're 25,309 miles away from the spacecraft and it's moving at 12,328 feet per second at 143 hours 47 minutes. This is Apollo controlled Houston. Apollo 8, Houston. Apollo 8, Apollo 8, Houston. Okay, Paul, can you uh, tell us if you've done anything with your potable water? We've noticed uh, our readout has uh, gone from 100% down to 56 in the last couple minutes. We're reading about 50% right now. All right, Roger, that uh, correlates with what we see. Uh, have you done anything to change configuration over? Uh, Jim, did you mean you could visually see it? Yeah, we're... We're... Oh, stand by, uh, again, uh, uh, Bill just dumped urine, so that might have been urine we were seeing. Uh, Bill just shut the potable inlet, uh, Ken. Okay, thank you. Uh, here's to Apollo 8. Go ahead, eight. Apollo eight, Apollo eight, go ahead. Uh, Roger, Houston. Uh, we're still showing about 52% here, and we had our switch on waste, so we don't know whether it dropped from a higher value or not. Uh, is yours uh, been stabilized now? That's affirmative. Ours is stabilized uh, now. And it was uh, reading uh, full just a few minutes ago. Uh, Roger, I don't think we can account for any sudden drop in water. Okay, uh, we looked in the malfunction procedures in uh, number 28, and it doesn't reveal anything very startling. Yeah, Bill's looking there now. Apollo Control, Houston, 144 hours, 8 minutes into the flight. And things are continuing to rock along. We're, uh, in the last few minutes, we uh, got a little surprise here with a not yet completely explained uh, water dump. We chatted with the crew about it, and uh, apparently Go Bill ahead. Anders had... Uh, Dumped some waste uh, matter, some urine overboard earlier, which had collected for a while. We still don't completely understand it. We're talking a little about this, and here's how the conversation goes. Look, uh, we don't care about the potable tank. Uh, but we do about the waste tank. So I'm just going to, just in case there is a problem somewhere, I'm going to shut the potable tank off and uh, leave the waste tank in with valve open. How's that sound to you? Stand by. Okay, eight, we concur. If I see any water floating around, I'll give you another call. All right, thank you. 
so much for our water situation. It's uh, apparently been laid to rest now. As Andrew said, not not really a problem. Just did not immediately explainable. So he turned off the potable tank. There are two tanks here: a potable tank, the drinking water, and the wastewater tank. He had uh, vented the wastewater tank to some some degree, but apparently had not but saw some kind of action on the potable meters. In any case, it's been adjusted. Our present uh, distance, 22,276 nautical miles from Earth. This, this puts the spacecraft at the synchronous uh, orbital altitude, and it will now begin to sink Canada its uh, direction in relation to our lunar map. In other words, it'll start flying in the direction of the turn of the Earth, or at least it will appear to uh, us down here on Earth to do that. That works, Canavan. Spacecraft, Good. in fact, is a fixed point in inertial space. Canavan Network, that too. Would Earth you is. meet me on Gauss Conference for a voice check, please? For mapping purposes, it'll appear to turn from approximately this point forward. Our Canavan velocity is 13,102 feet per second. At 1.44 hours, 13 minutes, this is Apollo Control, Houston. Carnarvon Network, Gauss Conference, how do you read? Carnarvon Network, Gauss Conference, voice check, how do you read? Carnarvon Network, Gauss Conference, voice check, how do you read? Carnarvon, Gutter Voice, Gauss Conference, voice check. Gutter Voice, Carnarvon, read you spring four. Roger, you're loud and clear. We're standing by. Remote your air to ground this net, please. Thank you, please. Carnarvon, Network, Gauss Conference, voice check. Network, Canalvin. Read your loud and clear. Roger. Okay. Apollo 8, Houston. Radio check. Apollo 8. Apollo 8. Radio check. Uh, Roger, we had a momentary loss of calm on the ground then. Read you loud and clear. Voice control, can I have the 472? How do you read? Voice control, can I have How do you read? Voice control, read you down there. Voice control, Carnarvon, how do you read? Apollo 8, Houston. Houston, Apollo 8, did you call? Apollo 8, Houston, here loud and clear. Uh, We've taken a look at this uh, water. Houston, Apollo 8. Apollo 8. Apollo 8, Houston. Read you loud and clear. We've taken a look at your potable water quantity problem. It appears to be a transducer problem. I suggest that you leave the potable tank isolated. You have sufficient water in the waste tank to continue the entry over. Roger. Thank you, Houston. Does that mean we're going for entry? 
Apollo 8, Apollo 8, go ahead. Roger, is there thermal stability good enough we can uh, leave the PTC attitude and go to entry uh, gimbal angles now? Houston, how do you read Apollo 8? Read you loud and clear, Apollo 8, and we're checking on the PTC problem now. Apollo 8, Houston, you're clear to the entry attitude at this time. Okay, fine, thank you. Apollo Control, Houston here at 144 hours, 38 minutes into the flight. Apollo 8 is 19,000 miles from the Earth. It's moving at 14,029 feet per second. The present combined weight of command module and service module is 31,600 pounds. We have some conversation. We have had some conversation. Let's hear it now. Apollo Control here. That brings us up to date. We look good all across the board. People, uh, the control center is beginning to fill up now with official observers and officials of the program. The 70 seat viewing room immediately behind this control center is about half filled right now and within the next hour I imagine we'll see it filled to overflowing which it's been during every critical event of this mission. At 144 hours 41 minutes this is Apollo Control of Houston. Houston Voice got her voice 425. Apollo 8, over. Apollo 8, loud and clear, go. Apollo 8, Apollo 8, go ahead. Roger, uh, we've completed the checklist down at the one hour point, and we'll stand by for one hour. Uh, Roger. Apollo 8, Apollo 8, Houston. Go ahead, Houston. Wait a minute. Go All right, uh, just for information, did you folks end up having to use any uh, command module RCS heaters? Uh, negative. All our uh, indicators uh, pegged either high or at 5 volts. Okay, thank you. Carnarvon Network, Goss Conference, voice check. How do you read? Network, Carnarvon. Read you weak but clear. Uh, Roger, Carnarvon, I read you loud and clear. Oh, you're loud and clear now. Follow eight. Houston, stand by for handover to Carnarvon. Roger. Apollo 8, Houston. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Houston. Okay, Apollo 8, uh, if you'll go to Pooh and accept We'd like to update your LEM and CSM state factors, over. Roger. 
Apollo Control, Houston here, 145 hours, 5 minutes into the flight. Some brief conversation with the crew since we last talked. Here it is. Apollo 8, Houston. State vector load is complete. Verified. Computer is yours. Apollo 8, Apollo 8, Houston. State vector load is complete. The computer is yours. Roger, Houston. We're going to block. Roger. Apollo Control, Houston here. And the spacecraft is now a mere 15,256 miles from the face of the Earth. Its velocity is almost a match in feet per second, 15,459 feet per second. Its weight, 31,600 pounds. The service module, or approximately uh, 20,000 of those pounds, will be jettisoned abruptly at 15 minutes before we reach the 80 mile high, the 400k, 400,000 foot mark. At uh, one other mention, the viewing room, as we said earlier, is beginning to fill with visitors, and among them uh, is Dr. Kurt Davis, the director of the Kennedy Space Center, and his number one deputy for launch operations, Rocco Patron gentleman who had so much to do with the departure of Apollo 8 from the uh, six morning six days ago they're here to watch it uh, come back to earth this morning at 145 hours nine minutes into the flight this is Apollo controlled Houston Apollo 8 Houston Okay, two fast items. Number one, it's been suggested that uh, since Marazine takes some time to take effect, you might consider whether you'd be interested in taking some now. And I have an entry pad, which has some very small updates to go on it, if you'd like to copy that. Okay, stand by. I'll get out the entry pad. Okay, go ahead with the entry pad, uh, Okay, we're still going to the Mid-Pacific. 357 152 359er 146-2913-267 plus 0813 Minus 1653 one four six four six one three zero zero two eight the next block is november alpha d sub zero four zero 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 two one zero 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 two five zero three Three five zero eight one six one six zero five nine zero three one two Zeta Persei up 
one six five. Right three four. Up. Non exit EMS pattern. Sirius and Rigel. Roll three zero eight. Pitch two zero nine. Yaw three five seven. No P sixty five involved, over. Roger, use uh, entry pad as follows, mid-Pacific, 357, 152-359, 146-29-13, 267, plus 0813, minus 156-03, 066-362-21, 647-1216-36301, 146-46-13, 0028 NA 400 0210 0025 0816 16059 0 Zeta Percy I up 165 right 34 up Use non exit MES pattern Sirius Rigel 308 209 357 no P65 that's correct, Paul. Eight. Apollo 8, Houston. You're clear to initiate cabin call, so catch your discretion. Over. Roger, Houston. We're starting that now. Roger. Houston, Apollo 8, or. Go ahead, 8. Okay, it doesn't appear that we're going to be able to trigger the uh, primary map, so I'm going to go ahead and start up the secondary loop. Okay, Apollo 8, uh, we concur. I used an Apollo 8. Go ahead, 8. Apollo 8, Apollo 8, go ahead. Roger, since we're going as smoothly as we are here and we've got good calm, let's start this pyro circuit check about 10 minutes early. What do you say? Apollo 8, Apollo 8. We can conduct the pyro check at any time. Why don't we uh, do it here just uh, momentarily then? All right, Roger. We'll give you a call when we're ready. Roger. Houston, we're ready to proceed with the pyro circuit check. Roger. Go ahead. Uh, Miss Finn, are you monitoring the sequential test now? Houston, Apollo 8.
Apollo 8, Apollo 8, that's permanent. Hello, Houston, Apollo 8. Apollo 8, Apollo 8, loud and clear. Affirmative, we are monitoring. Okay. Standing by for their go for pyro arm. Apollo 8, Apollo 8, you have a go. Roger. Up Apollo Control, Houston here at 145 hours, 32 minutes into the flight. And the trajectory of Apollo 8 is programmed against the, our flat wall map here, is carrying it on a path up the west coast of India. It will proceed northerly, northeasterly, in a very few moments and curve uh, then start in a, an easterly direction carrying it across China perhaps before then uh, it'll see a little bit of the uh, southern extremities of the Soviet Union the Himalayas China and then on down across Guam and uh, present velocity is 17,272 feet per second the spacecraft is only 11,626 miles from the face of the Earth. A few minutes ago, Frank Borman called us and suggested we uh, might entertain doing the pyro arm check a little early. It uh, was considered here. We quite agree with him, and we're all set to go on it. Here's how the conversation went. Houston, this is Apollo 8. How's your tracking looking? Looking great. Okay, everything went fine with the check. We're all armed, ready to go here. Okay, if you're not doing anything else, how about let's make a VHF check? Okay, I'll turn off my S band. The other two will stay on S band. Uh, Roger, I'll give you a count in just a second. Apollo 8, Houston. Simultaneous VHF and S band. Over. Roger, I'm not reading you on VHF. Hey, Roger. Stand by one. Apollo 8 Houston. Simultaneous VHF and S band. If you verify that you are on the left hand VHF antenna, over. We can verify the antenna, but we can't verify here in the SBAN or on VHF. Okay, we're receiving some downlink, uh, although it's considered to be poor quality. Apollo Control Houston here at 145 hours, 45 minutes into the flight. It all continues to be to operate quite satisfactorily. We tried a VHF check with the spacecraft a few minutes ago. It didn't work out so well. Neither Carnarvon nor Guam picked up on VHF. That from about 10,000 miles out. We're now 9,600 miles from the Earth. The velocity is up to 18,532 feet per second. And. Uh, we have a little conversation backed up on us. Let's hear it now. Follow control here. Some may be wondering what happens to the service module. Well, it's jettisoned at uh, 15 minutes before we reach our entry interface or entry point. And there's a preset burn of 90 foot per second cranked into the service module. It, it departs from the command module at that rate. Uh, the burn continues 
for uh, some period of time, exactly uh, which period I don't have in front of me, but in any case, the, the new trajectory of the service module carries it uh, about 100 miles or more south of the track of the uh, command module. It's not known exactly what will happen to the service module. Some people think it will come on down to an altitude of perhaps three or four hundred thousand feet, hit the uh, thicker atmosphere, and then bounce out into a, a sun-circling orbit. Others think it will be captured and will uh, certainly burn up before any of its pieces reach the Pacific Ocean. We just uh, can't predict at this point. We are certain that it'll be safely out of the way of Apollo 8. At 145 hours, 48 minutes, this is Apollo Control, Houston.